So as you guys know, Tesla stock is my second largest investment in my entire stock portfolio. And as such, it's very important for me to stay up to date with what Tesla is doing and continuously research everything about them. But it's also just as important to research their competitors as well. Uh, and of course, their upcoming so-called Tesla killers. Well, given that the Cybertruck is arguably the most exciting product coming from Tesla in the near future, I decided to take a deep dive into the overall kind of pickup truck market and take a look at what the main competitors will be for the Cybertruck and just how much of a threat they really are. All of that and more in today's video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go ahead and jump straight into this. Okay, so the way we're gonna do this is we'll just do a really quick recap on what the Cybertruck is and why it's really important. And we'll also take a look, of course, at the market opportunity for it, but then we'll jump straight into the biggest competitors that it'll be facing, specifically from gas, electric, and also hydrogen powered trucks. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. Okay, now the Cybertruck is at least one to two years away, depending on the version that you get. The more expensive versions will begin production next year, with the cheapest version starting a year after that in 2022. And that's actually the version that I reserved myself for less than $40,000, which I think is a pretty incredible price for such an awesome vehicle. Now, that one admittedly does have weaker specs, like the 250 miles of range, 7,500 pounds of towing, and 0 to 60 speed of less than 6.5 seconds, but for the average person, including myself, those specs are perfectly fine, and I think by then the battery technology will probably improve so much that I, I really wouldn't be surprised if that range ends up being like another 50 miles on top of it. But again, the selling point uh, here is that you get an amazing Tesla vehicle for less than $40,000, although I did also add the self-driving option because it locks in that price before it goes up, which I happened to get it when it was $7,000, and now it's already increased to $8,000. So uh, give it some time until they launch like the Robo Taxi service and the truck can actually earn you money, assuming that Tesla allows the truck to do it, which I don't see any reason why they wouldn't. And that self-driving option will very likely skyrocket. So I decided to just go ahead and, and uh, get it right now. Now, what's surprising is that most of the pre-orders so far were actually for the more expensive versions, and it's the middle one that I think is really the most compelling. For an extra $10,000, you get 50 more miles of range, another 3,000 pounds of towing, a faster 0 to 60 speed of less than 4.5 seconds, and a dual motor to power all of it. And then for those that money is not a big concern, you also have the $70,000 option that gives you an absolute beast of a truck with over 500 miles of range, which is double the cheapest version, over 14,000 pounds of towing, which is double the cheapest version, and basically supercar acceleration of zero to 60 in less than three seconds, which is less than half the time of the cheapest version, all with a mind-blowing three motors, which is triple the amount of the cheapest version. And of course, build quality and aesthetically, every version is amazing with what essentially looks like a militarized SUV to me with a bulletproof exoskeleton that is even catching the attention of many police departments, like some from Dubai, Kansas, Ontario, and even Mexico, some of which are already pre-ordering the truck, noting that the stronger power, lower maintenance costs, and armored uh, design makes them an obvious choice for their fleet. But on top of that, the Cybertruck also comes with an awesome looking retractable bed roof, and of course, endless possibilities of attachments and accessories, thanks to the fact that the truck is battery electric and can power most of it. There's even going to be a solar roof version that will charge the truck when not being able to be plugged in, and I do plan on getting that upgrade myself. Uh, the only thing I really don't like about the Cybertruck is the minimalist interior that I'm hoping they work on some more be before release, and the fact that it only comes in stainless steel, which I think is a very boring kind of color for it, but Elon has said in the past that it can be wrapped, so I'll probably wrap mine in black and make it look like the tumbler from uh, Batman. Anyway, add it all up and the Cybertruck is looking primed for disruption in a huge market. Back in April, Inside EVs reported over 600,000 pre-orders for the Cybertruck in less than five months after being announced. 
For context, the hugely popular Model 3 only had around 500,000 pre-orders in the same time frame. Uh, so that just shows you how insanely popular the Cybertruck is, although admittedly with only a $100 reservation fee, we'll likely see a lot of cancellations by the time the truck is released, but at this rate, it's well on its way to possibly even surpassing a million pre-orders by the time, which is pretty crazy to think about. Meanwhile, the pickup truck market is very large, especially here in America, where the truck will be built. According to Statista, the pickup truck market is actually the second largest uh, vehicle type only behind crossover SUVs. And perhaps even more surprising than that is that Ford's F-150 truck has actually been the best selling vehicle in general for over three decades. That's pretty crazy. And when looking at truck sales from Ford, GM, Chrysler, and Toyota, they each brought in tens of billions of dollars in truck revenue, so if Tesla was to be in a similar position to any of them, there could be some nice profits there. For context, Tesla's entire revenue for all of 2018 was still less than what Ford did with just pickup trucks alone. Thing is though that this market has always stuck to similar designs and concepts, so for Tesla to go with something that looks radically different that again, in my opinion, actually looks more like an SUV kind of pickup truck uh, sort of hybrid, uh, I think it'll really help them disrupt the market because you might be tapping into the two kind of largest markets there in SUVs and trucks. I myself have never been a truck person, never liked trucks, just never been that attracted to them. Uh, but I do love SUVs and the Cybertruck just really appeals to me. And I think it could have a similar effect for many other people as well. Although I do admit that obviously there are a lot of people that hate the Cybertruck's design because it looks so kind of radically different or futuristic to them. Okay. Now, with that said, obviously this is a big opportunity for Tesla, but what is the competition like? What are the biggest competitors, not only right now, but what's coming in the future as well? Well, let's go ahead and run through the gas, electric, and even hydrogen options and compare them to the Cybertruck to see how Tesla stacks up against each one of them. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, starting with gas options, as we saw before in the Forbes article, the best-selling ones really came from Ford, Chevy, Dodge, and Toyota. So we're going to look at those specific uh, brands right now. Now, obviously the Cybertruck only has three options, but that is definitely not the case with these other manufacturers. In fact, the Ford F-150 alone has seven different versions. So the only way we could possibly make this comparison with so many different companies is to use the highest spec version of each one, and that would of course be the tri-motor Cybertruck versus the best that all the others offer. And by the way, I got this data from wheelsjoint.com. But I'll just tell you guys right now that it's not even remotely close. The Cybertruck destroys all of them in practically every category. When looking at horsepower, the Cybertruck is not only the clear leader, but it does close to double the next closest competitor in the Ford F-150 and close to three times the amount of Toyota. That's definitely going to come in handy for those power hungry truck workers. When looking at torque, the story is exactly the same at about double what Ford does and actually close to four times what Toyota does. So again, not even in the same universe really. Turning to towing capacity, it gets a little closer for the Chevy Silverado that almost reaches 10,000 pounds, but the Cybertruck not only still beats that pretty easily, but also surpasses all the other competitors on the list by nearly double or even more. And as you might expect, all of that power also translates to acceleration as the Cybertruck does zero to 60 in less than three seconds, which is about half or even less than basically all of the other trucks on the list. So again, in terms of specs, the Cybertruck destroys the gas competition very easily. Where it does start to suffer a little though is on price. And uh, that's where the Cybertruck is significantly more expensive than all of these other competitors except for the Ford F-150. But the funny thing is that we can easily make a case that this is yet another positive for the Cybertruck. You have to remember that the Ford F-150 is by far the best selling truck and, <clears throat> excuse me, and yet the Cybertruck completely destroys it on specs and still manages to come out at a cheaper price which is pretty incredible. And even though the other competitors are cheaper, the Cybertruck can still drop all the way down to less than $40,000, which would actually make it cheaper than all of these competitors except for the Chevy, but still fairly close to it. And even at the cheapest version, the Cybertruck would still be fairly similar in specs to every single one of them. It won't blow them out of the water like the tri-motor does, but it would still be very similar and in some, some cases even better, but still come in at an even cheaper price. 
Of course, the range would get cut in half, so that might be an issue to some if they're going to uh, be traveling long distances, but I think most people that actually need that raw power and range can probably afford the highest tier, most expensive Cybertruck anyway. So when it comes to gas options, I just really don't think it's even close. The Cybertruck is on a whole nother level in my opinion. That said though, gas trucks are really the market that Tesla should be disrupting and stealing market share away from thanks to the better performance. But what happens when you throw up the Cybertruck up against other electric trucks or even hydrogen ones. Let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. Okay, well, one of the first electric trucks that was getting a ton of buzz early on as a uh, possible Tesla killer was of course the Rivian R1T. I personally think that the design is a little ugly and boring, but I remember when I said that in one of my previous videos, a bunch of people in the comment section not only disagreed with me, but many were actually pretty angry about it. So that tells me that for whatever reason, people actually love the design of the Rivian and that's okay, I'll concede that point. Maybe the Rivian with its more traditional looking design will appear, uh, appeal, I'm sorry, appeal to a wider audience than the Cybertruck, and that's a fair enough point. But on top of that, the specs are also pretty damn impressive. At, at the high end, it'll do 400 miles of range, a really fast zero to 60 of three seconds, and come with a whopping four motors. However, there are some big asterisks to the Rivian that I always see people overlook. For starters, the price starts at 69,000, and there's supposed to be three different versions, even though they don't separate them by specs. They only give you the top tier specs with the starting price. But the difference, the difference compared to the Cybertruck is that the different Cybertruck versions end at about 70,000, whereas the Rivian only starts there. So the Rivian could end up being significantly more expensive than Tesla since the Cybertruck starts at only around 40,000. And even at the highest end specs, the Rivian gets around 100 miles of range less than Tesla and about 3,000 pounds less of towing as well. Not to mention that there's no way that uh, Rivian will have anywhere near the same kind of autonomous driving technology as Tesla, nor the brand strength and charger uh, infrastructure. So while I do think that the Rivian is an amazing choice for someone who really hates the aesthetic design of the Cybertruck, if you actually like the looks of the Cybertruck, I think you're definitely better off just sticking with Tesla, and I think the end result will be that it sells much better. But speaking of traditional aesthetics, uh, that's where the electric Ford F-150 comes into play, and that I do think has a very real chance of giving the Cybertruck a run for its money. As we said before, the F-150 is already an insanely popular uh, model, so making a very powerful electric version of it should only attract even more customers. However, there's a few issues with the F-150. For one, we still know almost nothing about it despite it being expected to launch around the same time as the Cybertruck. In fact, the only images that we have is of some prototype version, although Inside EVs did their best to render what they think it'll most likely look like like, and as you might expect, it's a traditional looking pickup truck, so that should appeal to anyone that hates the Cybertruck's design. On top of that, when talking about specs, I'd be very surprised if Ford doesn't go all out to build a beast of a truck for the F-150 line, and they tried to demonstrate this by showing the prototype towing a million pounds of rail cars, which would practically be impossible on the road. But as Inside EVs points out, rail cars on steel wheels on steel tracks have very low resistance and it's basically a marketing trick to make it seem like the truck is a lot more powerful than it probably really is. Uh, they expect the specs to be much closer to something like the Rivian R1T, which as we saw before is fairly comparable to the Cybertruck. They go on to estimate that range should easily surpass 300 miles and probably be even higher than the Mustang Model E crossover SUV, which by the way, maxes out at 300. But uh, to compete with the Cybertruck, it'll definitely need a much higher option in my opinion. That higher option though could cost you a pretty penny as Inside EVs estimates that it should cost less than 100,000 but won't even come close to the Cybertruck's base $40,000 mark. Still, the price is really the most unknown factor here. If they're able to get specs close to the Rivian but at a price closer to the Cybertruck, I think the Ford F-150 electric could be the biggest challenger to the Cybertruck so far, but a lot still remains to be seen. That isn't to say though that there aren't a few more wild cards still in the mix, so let's quickly run through those and finish up the video. 
Now, there's the electric Bollinger B2, but at over $100,000, I really doubt it'll gain much traction at all. GM is also working on an electric Hummer that uh, could be promising, but we know almost nothing about it other than car and driver estimating a $70,000 price tag and a release date similar to that of the Cybertruck. There's also the Lordstown Endurance that was trying to be the first EV truck to market with a release date of as early as this year, but that's since been delayed by at least another year, and with less than 300 miles of expected range, I'm not convinced it'll compete very well with Tesla and Ford at all. Uh, and finally, there's the super speculative Nikola Mot uh, Nikola Motors Badger truck that will use a combination of battery electric and hydrogen fuel cell to power its truck, and that could actually lead to some huge advantages over the Cybertruck. For one, the range is expected to be as much as 600 miles, which is 100 miles more than the very top tier Cybertruck, thanks to 300 miles coming from the battery and 300 miles coming from hydrogen. It'll also have the same zero to 60 acceleration, about the same torque, and even more horsepower as well. Not to mention that hydrogen refuels much faster than batteries uh, take to charge, so that could also be a huge advantage. However, that version of the truck is estimated to start at $80,000, which is about $10,000 more than the highest tier Cybertruck, and even just the battery version is estimated to start at $60,000 as well, which is about $20,000 more than the lowest tier Cybertruck according to Car and Driver. We also have no clue where the truck will even be built yet, since they're still looking for an OEM partner to help them build it. And of course, the biggest issue of all is that we still don't know if the whole hydrogen movement will even catch on, as it's been criticized for being as much as over 50 percentage points less efficient than batteries, which could be a real problem in the long run. So there's just too many unknowns with Nikola to crown it better than the Tesla Cybertruck, even though it's a very interesting truck for sure. There's no doubt about it. Just too many uh, unknowns, a little bit too much speculation with it. And that's ultimately the problem that I have with so many of these so-called Tesla killers or even like Cybertruck killers or whatever you wanna call them, is that there's just such little information on them, yet they claim to have such amazing specs and like really soon release dates, but they always kind of end up delaying those release dates or in some cases, who knows if, Th those vehicles might even come to market at all. And for those reasons, I just really feel like the Ford F-150 electric truck is probably going to be the biggest threat to the Cybertruck and has a, a very real chance of actually outselling the Cybertruck could be uh, very possible because the F-150 is a very popular brand, was a best-selling vehicle just kind of on its own uh, even before the electric truck. So now you get the electric truck into the mix and it's got the traditional design and it's a very reliable and kind of stable company in Ford as opposed to like a very um, speculative kind of startup company where, you know, again, who knows if some of those vehicles even come to market. I just think Ford is really going to go all in there. And so I see that as for sure being the biggest threat to the Cybertruck, in my opinion. Um, but having said all of that, I, I still feel like the future of electric vehicles is going to have to do a lot with battery technology and autonomous driving technology and a charging network and infrastructure and all that kind of stuff. And when it comes to all those different areas, there's really just no company that I think of as a bigger player than Tesla because they invested so heavily in all those areas and so early on uh, at a time when so many legacy players were just kind of delaying the inevitable and now they're all just kind of playing catch up. So. For me, and I'm probably, you know, I'm definitely biased because if I ask myself the question, if I was going to buy an electric vehicle with autonomous driving technology, which which uh, you know company would I go with? I would definitely go with Tesla. So I might be kind of biased in saying that, but I have a reason to say that because Tesla um, is such a big player and in my opinion, the biggest player in these different areas. So anyway, that's why I continue to remain invested in Tesla as a uh, shareholder. But um, anyway, those are just my opinions. I really don't see a lot of these other companies as being major threats to the Cybertruck, but the Ford F-150 I think is definitely up there. Uh, let me know what you guys have to say down below though. I would love to read your comments and I'll try to respond to as many as I can. Thank you for watching the video. Make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Really means a lot to me. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.